Okay, so now let's think about how we can do the same thing in a different way. So now we're gonna do something else. Now, let's set up like a password. Let's set up a password where if you type in the word hello in this text box and then click the button, it redirects you to Google. But if you don't type in hello, then it displays an error. So the password is basically hello. Let's try to code that into our Flask app. So this, this approach, I'm trying to explain one essential concept. And that concept is creating a separate UI and a separate Python file, okay? So in this case, in, in the case that we just went over, our two elements weren't really separated. It was like you click the button and then it interacts with the Python and then the Python returns something new. But what I'm trying to explain to you with the second method is how you can separate the UI with the code. In essence, everything that's being returned to the user should be returned from the HTML and everything that's being processed should be processed from the Python, right? And, and you're probably wondering, well, what's the point of doing that? Well, the reason why I'm teaching this so early is because it's so important to understand how to separate the UI from the code. Because let's say you're creating a huge scalable application and you want to be able to use the same logic, the same Python file that can use logic um, to make calculations, process things on multiple different platforms. You wanna have an Android app, you wanna have an iPhone app, and you wanna have a website. Well, in that case, you can't just be changing the UI from your Python file because your Python file is responsible for making calculations. You need to change the UI based on whatever UI you're using. If you're using an iPhone, you wanna change the UI for the iPhone. If you're using an Android, you wanna change the UI for the Android, right? You wanna change the UI in whatever file is related to the UI, which in, in the case of a website is the HTML file. So now what we're going to do is try to keep the Python separate from the UI, meaning we're not going to return any sort of HTML page or string using Python. We're just going to um, return a value to our UI, which will then return um, a page. So if that's kind of confusing, we're, we're going to go over it and that'll hopefully clarify things. So basically, let's go back to our HTML page. We have a second form or not a form, we have a second input with a button and another text field. Same format as the one above, um, it's just not in a form. And the reason it's not in a form is because we're not gonna use a post request for this type of method. In this case, we're going to use an on-click function, meaning the moment the user clicks the button, it's going to invoke a method, a function called number two. You're probably wondering, where's this function? Where's this function that's going to be invoked? Well, it's in the HTML file itself in a script, right? So you can have JavaScript scripts in your HTML, um, which basically contain functions that process things within your HTML itself. So we have a script, okay? And ignore ignore this line, ignore line five for now. I'll explain it later. We have a script called, um, you know, just it's a type of JavaScript. And then we have a function number two, right? Because again, on click, we invoke number two. Then what we do is we say the value, the value that the user has typed in, which the user types in in this text box, the value is equal to this value dot val. You're probably wondering, what is this value? Well, hashtag value two refers to the ID of value or the name of value two. Um, which is basically this text box. So we're getting the value of whatever the user types in, and then we're creating a URL, okay? So, so here's the process of what's going to happen. We just got the value. We just got the value of what the user typed in. Now, we want to send this value to our Python code. We want our Python to process it. We want our Python to return a processed value, and then we want to display that processed value from our HTML file, because we to I told you earlier, we're doing all of the displaying from our HTML file. So how do you do that? Well, we create a URL, and we call it value getter. And then in our Python code, we create a function called value getter with a URL of value getter slash value, which means if you type in 127.0.0.1 colon 5,000 slash value getter slash some value, whatever this can be, it will invoke this function with a parameter of whatever this value is, which in this case is DSF blah, blah, blah. So it will invoke this function with value as the parameter. So in this case, what we're doing is we're creating a URL of value getter and we're concatenating the value that the user entered into our URL. So now let's say let's say the user enters um, I like cheese or something, right? It would take us, it would take us to http colon slash slash one twenty seven point zero point zero point one colon five thousand slash I like cheese. When you navigate to this website, it will take you to this Python file and it will pass an I like cheese as the value. And then the Python file will do some processing on that file, on that value, and it will return a response. Does that make sense? We are basically taking a URL and we're passing a value into it and then we're getting a response. We're not, we're not displaying a page from the Python file. We're just responding to a value. Okay, let's look at how we do that. So we do this thing called dot get JSON. And this is what's called an Ajax function. So you don't need to worry too much about what Ajax is, but basically import this line. It's a script that allows you to use an Ajax function, which allows you to basically navigate to a different URL and get its response. So what we're doing is we're doing dot get JSON URL. So we're, we're passing in this website that I just told you about this, the one that goes to I like cheese. And then we're, we're getting a function response, right? We're getting, a, we're getting a response from our server. In this case, this function is our server. We're getting the response. And then what we're saying is, if the response is true, let's like redirect the user to Google. And if it's false, let's let's just say the value is false. 
Okay, so we're we're using this function dot get json to get our value that is returned from our Python function, and then we are basically putting some logic upon it and redirecting our user based on that value. And we're saying if we're not able to get a response from um, that website, like let's say we messed up the URL or let's say our Python function is not working, we return the wrong value, we display an error in our console. Okay, um, and then we close the function. So let, let's understand what's actually happening here. We receive a value. Right, we receive what we're, whatever we're receiving is the value that the user entered in the text box. So far, so good. If you don't understand up until this point, rewind the video and try to understand why this value contains I like cheese. Because this value at this point contains I like cheese if the user has entered I like cheese and pressing the button. Then we're saying if the string received, which in this case is I like cheese, if it equals hello, we return true because hello is our password. And if, if, if not, then we return false. Okay, and what this JSONify does is it basically says our key of response associates with our value of true. Okay, this is just convention. It's just a way to return tr the, the word true by corresponding it with the key of response. In this case, you're returning the word false by corresponding it with the key of response. Then you can access that by doing server response that associates with response because response is the key and it has an associated value that is either true or false. Okay, and then this response.header.add, don't worry about it. It's just convention that you need to do in order to make sure that um, the responses actually go through. So now let's actually check what's happening. Let's say I press type in I like cheese, click value two. I get value is incorrect because what happened was, let's go through the whole process flow. I typed in I like cheese. I clicked the button. The button had an on click, which went to number two. The number two passed in I like cheese into my URL of value getter. And then we did this dot get JSON thing, which basically gets the response from the server. The response from the server should be false because I like cheese is not equal to hello. And then we just say, um, well, since it's not true, if, if it's not true, we're going to display an alert that says incorrect. And that's exactly what happened, a result that says incorrect. Now let's say we typed in hello and click value two. Boom, it redirected to Google. Why? Because if server response, the value that is associated with the key of response equals true, well, then we're going to read. This is just code that redirects you to Google. You don't need to understand it. It's just to make a point. It redirects you to Google. So that's basically two different ways you can connect to the UI with the code, um, one way using a post request and one way using Ajax. Um, if, if that didn't make as much sense, please take a look at the blog post, which describes it in depth, and um, the, the notes and the link in the description. Okay. So thank you so much for listening. Um, please leave a like, uh, comment if you need help. I will respond to the comments. Um,